1586, there was a boy in Limerick, and two very important things happened to him. He went kayaking for the first time on Loch Gurr with Kilfin and Outdoor Education Centre. That boy still has that photograph. And the second thing was he started secondary school. The canoeing experience was wonderful. It captivated him. The secondary school experience didn't. And during the secondary school years, he engaged in a lot of antisocial behaviour. The guards called to the door. Mom and Dad were very stressed out. There was fire involved, the wrong type of fire. There was uh, alcohol misuse. But when that boy finished secondary school and became a man, he found the outdoors, adventure, travel, journey, mountain biking, and you. And that boy is me, and I'm here 25 days, years later. Arguably, when I was a young person, if youth teacher was around, I probably would have been a student in it, but I work there now. So today is a great day for me because I've been able to use those experiences, put myself through a process of adventure and education here in the last couple of years, and it's led me to this poster. So let me talk you through it, let me guide you through it. And in a few moments, I'm going to need you to visualize, so I need you to get your minds ready for that. Okay? So in reviewing Canadian outdoor education, I looked at two models. I had a bigger choice. Uh, there's lots out there. And I have some friends that have gone and worked out there. And um, I suppose what I found was a lot of synergies between what they do there and what we have to offer. Of course, the landscape is much bigger. It's a very developed country. It's rich in natural resources. So it doesn't have to rely on tourism as heavily as we do. But the symmetries are, are, are great. We have a, an almost Irish community in Newfoundland. I'm sure some of you are aware of that. They even have an Irish brogue. So um, I want to refer to the first one, the uh, Canadian Outdoor Leadership Training Program. So the students that partake in that, they run two programs per year, two three-month programs. They pay to take part in that. I'd encourage you to go and have a look at their website. It's probably one of the snazziest outdoor training websites we've come across. Very attractive and very, very detailed information on it. And um, it's been running for quite a long time. It was founded in 1959. Um, you can go there and take part in other programs yourselves. But this particular one focuses on a traineeship. So it's very similar to what you might think of, say, the outdoor instructor training programs we have here that are funded by SOLAS. The difference being the candidates and the students pay to be on it. Um, well, there is a very much a holistic focus on education, and the key experiences are, or the key elements are peak uh, experiences, peak adventure, they have soft skills training, <coughs> and a large emphasis on environmental awareness, and ultimately creating young people who are able to go out and lead introductory outdoor experiences, either on a residential basis or wilderness based. So it's a really successful program mm -hmm. there. The other one that I a lot from was the environmental career camp. So that is very similar to what uh, we have in youth reach in Ireland, except it's very much outdoor focused. So the students are actually paid to be on it. They can gain a salary over the time. So they're between 14 and 17, very similar to the students that I work with. And in that, they go away on a residential and wilderness experience for six weeks, and they do some really crazy stuff. Of course, they do canoeing and navigation and bushcraft, we know about all of that, but they also work with chainsaws. Quite hard to get your head around young people with a lot of energy using chainsaws, but it's very vocational. And that's where my idea for youth reach is going to go. I want to create the first month long outdoor experience for them. It'll be like Irish college. Students would want to go away in summer to this. The 110 centres around Ireland could nominate their students to take part in this program, and the 11 outdoor education centres in Ireland could all be key stakeholders in it. I don't know if any of you here, I could be ringing you next summer to come and work on this program. And in that, I want to create an island-based adventure. Picture Shark and Island. We bring them down there for a month. We train them in navigation, in the environment. They go bird watching. They have their own secret place on the island. And hopefully, at the end of that month, we are hopefully creating people who are socially aware, socially capable. They're able to look after each other, 
respect one another. They are environmentally aware. So when they go back to their own place, they will have a greater uh, care for it. And that they're place-based educators. So, yes, we have five key things that I want to achieve in that camp, and they're based on what I've discovered in Canada. A moderate amount of stress for that college here for the last two years. Uh, we had experiences creating success for the individual and the group. They kayaked all the way out to Fasten Lighthouse at the end of the month. Can you imagine young people, the effect that that would have on them? Group living, building your own shelter, being in a tent, in good weather and bad weather, and obviously experiencing the new environment. Let's try and get back to our roots as an island people. And then obviously having that very important personal development of reflection and assimilation time. And then we help them back into their home and to grow new communities. And you never know, they might be standing here in 25 years time giving a similar talk. Thank you very much. I guess that's question time. Question time. <laughs> uh, anybody, any questions for John? Um, I'm just interested in the a moderate amount of stress uh, thing that Brinsley like kind of highlighted there. Um, how do you see that working, given that everybody experiences stress to different levels? And so, you know, how, how would you see that working in a group environment? Yeah, I've. Uh, I've thought about this quite a lot. Um, I suppose just drawing from my own personal experiences, even today, you know, moderate amount of stress delivering this, but um, I think you're going to need to have a very skilled group of facilitators working on a program like that. So I don't think one instructor or a facilitator could run that whole program. You're going to have to bring people who are experts in their field to help con control or facilitate that. Um, and as you quite rightly say, everyone experiences it to a different level. And I'll be quite mindful that we don't go after that sort of, um, I suppose, older style, um, you know, where we frighten people right to the edge of, you know, what they're you know, capable of. I think that would be quite a negative thing. And others referred to today that taking the softer approach, like Terence said, about, you know, creating a walking stick to build a rapport and then ease into the expedition at the end of the month. in the idea that you were saying that the students got paid when they were participating in it and what your thoughts are on <coughs> the idea of if, if they're paying or if they're not getting paid um, in what way does that influence or change the participation within it? Okay. Um, well I, I work in the youth group centre myself uh, where students receive uh, two levels of training allowance depending on their age and I certainly know many students there that is their, their end game. That's why they're there, because of their social background and circumstances. Um, I think, yes, we would probably, probably him, um, hold on to something like a solace training course. That would be a framework that we could use. But I suppose the danger, because I'm proposing something quite new and radical for youth reach, it's probably better to use some of the building blocks that are already in place so that we have a better chance of making this succeed. But I think, yes, they should have some form of reward at the end of it, be that um, an allowance to get outdoor equipment for themselves or whatever that might be. Thank you. I'm just going to take one more moment to say a very big thank you to uh, the teaching staff on the course and to all my classmates for a wonderful two years. So, uh, and thanks to you for coming.